Welcome, my friends. Today we are discussing and reviewing these amazing pen rests. Sorry, a little grabby. By the way, these are where I get some of my G2 refills and I keep these minis around. So when I go to the office, if someone says, hey, can I borrow a pen? I'm not gonna give them, you know, a nice $100 pen. I'm gonna give them something like this. Anyway, back to these awesome pen rests. All right, pen rests. Do you need one? Absolutely not. Is it kind of cool to have? Absolutely so. Especially if you've got a designated area like I do for writing. I've got my writing desk, my escritoire as it were. So to have something that is designated at any point so I can go ahead and just put a pen down, it's great to have. Another thing they do is they really add some decadence and decor to your area. And you can get them in all different types of materials. I happen to prefer metals like brass, uh, bronze, or whatever it might be. So I, I like the metal ones, but you can get these in all sorts of varieties. It'd be a static design, such as, actually, you know what, while we're talking about pen rests, I'll go ahead and grab out of this guy. Right, you might have a more static design, kind of like this, which it just is what it is. Um, I also kind of like these pen rests here because even when they're not holding pens, they kind of add a flair to your desk. How did I get into pen rests? This pen rest came for free with a pen, one of my first pens I got into the hobby with. It wasn't even a machine pen, it was like a you know $15, $20 pen off Amazon back in 2019 or so. And it happened to come with this pen rest. Now the pen is long gone, I gave it away to someone I thought might enjoy it more, but I kept the pen rest because this pen rest is pretty cool. Side note, when I recently showed this design, um, I had another small maker, Kevin Zog, and he's making this design with nicer woods and engravings. So I do have one of those on order because this is really handy, right? So this is a kind of basic wood pen rest here, and and it acts as a carrying case as you can see and then you flip it up and then you sit it back down and it's also a pen rest on your desk now this type is really cool because it keeps the pen vertical right so this is a vintage pen this has a silicone sack and if you were to leave this lateral or even tip down it might seep some ink eventually so this pen rest is great and i keep my vintage pen in there for that very reason now back over to our metal pen rests, okay? So we've got two themes. We've got a sea themed one with the octopus, the crabs and the lobster, and then we've got a land based theme with the praying mantis and the rattlesnake and the scorpion. So let's break them down by price point, okay? So when we break them down by price point, we see an ascending value over here of somewhere around 10 to 15 bucks, up to maybe 17, 20 bucks. And then when we jump to this guy, this is like 80, 85 bucks. And you can get super fancy versions of, you know, different exotic materials that go up to $300. So we see a variety of price points. Now let's look at some of these purchases. So what I will say is that even though a lot of the same designs you will see repeated over and over on the internet, right on a picture, these pretty much look identical. However, the quality between all of the different makers is not equal. And this is a great example here, right? So first let's look at the, the height. There you go. So this one over here holds the pen way higher. Look at the stance. This one holds it further back. It's a little bit more centralized. Sometimes when you put a pen on this one, it's a little bit too far forward and it'll go forward. Let's look at the legs, okay? So on the legs here, they're all separate and you're basically able to get that pretty much level. On the legs here, some of them are kind of together just due to the size of the piece and then I don't even think that's a, uh, a problem of shipping, even though that exists. I think this is just a, a failed mold because look at that, that should be curved down to meet. When I looked at that, that's kind of inherent in the design. That's not a failure um, of packaging, I don't think. Anyway, so you find even at similar price points, big differences in quality of some of these. So you really do have to read the reviews and see what you're getting, what other people are saying. Is it shipped well? Is it packaged well? Is it symmetrical? Does it work well? Another great example, this scorpion, the one I got was not packaged well, so um, the legs were bent far enough that it wouldn't say stable, so I sent it back and I got a return. And I have this one now and it works great. So if you get one of these in the mail, 
and it is not up to your fullest expectation, please ship it back because that's their problem. The shipper and the producer need to eat the costs of their poor quality control. Make sure that you get one that is level, as in it's not gonna like wobble around when you've got a pen on it. It's level, it stands on its own. So here's the Scorpion. When I got this thing, it was bent out of shape because of poor packaging. So other boxes and packages in the midst of the mail had kind of squashed the things down. Now on these metal ones, you are kind of able to gently torque the legs down. And what you want to do is you want to torque each individual leg down so it is steady. On this one, I actually had to align the claws too. So if you look from the side, they're kind of aligned there. So this one, they were torqued out of place. So some of the metal ones, they have poor packaging. You really got to watch your quality control. Return it if you don't like it. Um, you shouldn't have to bend anything, but you know, I've gotten accustomed to bending, making small modifications here and there to make sure they work. But if you're unhappy, return it, get a replacement, get your full cost back. All right, now onto the actual rests themselves. I've got the crab. This is a nice crab here, um, well decked out, well balanced. So this one is nice. As you can see, it's got a nice wide place for pens to go. The next one, the scorpion. Also wonderful as far as like decor, something to adorn your desk. However, it's more on the thinner side. So the Scorpion, I would go if you're into machine pens, you know, that fits well. But if you're trying to do a bigger fountain pen, it might not work as well. The back part here, it's basically like a back rest. So if you put your pen there, it won't go back any further or it will help support the pen. But at the same time, if you've got lots of metal pens, you don't want to kind of scrape metal on metal often so um, something else to note right so I'm also looking for a smooth area so you don't scrape up any pens too all right we're moving forward we've got the praying mantis here and this guy is pretty sweet check out the underside of the caricapist there now this one is one that you rest your pens like that right so it's actually resting on the desk itself so this guy works he takes up more space on the desk because he doesn't fully actually carry the pen himself, but he's a really welcome addition to the character of the escritoire. Next up, we've got our little lobster guy. Now this one is very similar to the crab in its actual holding and positioning of the pens. However, it extends further back a lot. So on the escritoire, it takes up a little bit more space and it's essentially about the same um, pen holding capabilities as the crab. Then we move to the octopus. All right, the octopus is really cool. It definitely makes a bigger statement on the desk. It's got some detail on the bottom. And um, one thing I didn't, one thing I didn't care for though was where the actual milling or stamping is. There's a slight ridge right there, and I did put some felt over that. Um, to kind of protect my pens because I don't like them resting on a ridge. So the octopus, it's still under 20 bucks. It makes a nice statement, but I did end up kind of making some modifications to help protect any pens. Last up, the rattlesnake. So this one was by and far the most expensive piece here. All these other ones were under 20 bucks. This guy was like four times that price. Now, if you actually look at the detailing on this piece, this is gorgeous. Like look at each little scale is milled out. You know, it goes to the bottom with a different different texture on the bottom too. That wasn't needed because you don't see it, but that's how a snake actually is. And then they've got their little uh, namesake there. But um, this is like worlds above the others as far as production value, right? Now, this is the base model. You can also go up another $200 if you wanted and get like fancier metals with like uh, precious stone inlays for the eyes. As far as actual impressiveness as to the piece itself the snake by far blows everything away now here's the rub i don't really care for my pens resting on that scaly kind of uh, scrapey place so if you see in my videos very rarely do i actually use this because i don't want it scraping anything up and when i do use it i sit it very gingerly to find the balance points so it doesn't scrape things up going up and down on that like sharp facade there so and this one you know i on the octopus i went ahead i made some modifications to make it a little bit smoother for the pens i would be resting there i'm not going to do that to this because if i put two pieces of felt there and there it's going to ruin the whole aesthetic of this so the snake is by far the coolest piece of you know decor on your desk 
However, it is actually, in my opinion, the least likely pen rest that I am to use. Now let's go down the line. Which pen rests do I find most likely to use? All right, I'm pulling forward the one I said I wouldn't get because everybody had it and it was way overplayed, the crab and the similarly shaped lobster. These are the two pen rests I actually grab the most because they are compact and they've got a nice wide angle. They can handle big fountain pens or even smaller machine pens, right? So these two are the most versatile and at somewhere around 10 to 15 bucks a pop. If you are gonna get only one, I would probably recommend one of these two here. Now these two here, they are really cool. If you are kind of building a theme or adding to your decor, I love them, can't say enough about them. They're the same price point, so you can't go wrong, but they're not as versatile. This one has a little bit of a thinner hold for pens, so it's not gonna fit the bigger fountain pens as well. And then this one, you know, you've gotta go ahead and still lean your pen down somewhere, so that takes up more space and it's just kind of not all encompassing. So that is kind of why I put those kind of second tier. Now, if you're talking the bigger ones, right, you're talking about something that's making a real statement on your desk. It's something that's not as space concise as the crab, right? This is gonna take up more real estate. It makes a bigger statement. When people walk by, they see these more. Now at these two price points, I'm gonna say for my usability, under 20 bucks, I'm probably gonna go with the Octopus, even though I made those modifications of the felts to protect my expensive pens. You know, if you just have, you know, cheapo pens, that's not gonna matter anyway. In addition, you can kind of utilize the other positions at times for different pens. So that's kind of a nifty thing about the Octopus. And it's still under 20 bucks. Now, when you're jumping all the way up, this by far is the coolest thing you could have on your desk. Does it hold the pens as well? If you got cheap pens, yeah, I don't care. I'm not gonna worry. If you've got expensive pens that you don't wanna go putting snail trails on, I'm not gonna use this. So take it as you will. Those are my thoughts on pen rests. And they are a versatile thing that can add a lot of character and quality to your area, your space, your writing desk, your escritoire. However, they are not necessary and they are an extra expense to someone whose pure interest is in just writing. Do you need one? Not really. Does it make the area pretty cool? I think so. Add to that, there's a variety of different price points and thoughts that you should consider. So, you know, if you have a pen you wanna keep up right, maybe a pen stand kind of more like this is for you. If you're building a theme, you can get some, you know, different metals or resins or, you know, other things like that. I've seen cats, I've seen um, medieval knights holding your pen. So you can get a variety of different aesthetics for your escritoire. If you are just going for max versatility at under or around $15, I would go with the crab or the lobster. If you're going for a bigger desk statement under $20, I'd go the octopus. If you're going for maximum desk statement and hey, check this out, this is wicked cool, go for the snake even though it's not quite as useful for the expensive pens that you don't want to scrape up. And if you're just adding some character, you can always go in a different route too. So if you were looking to add some decor or character to your desk or writing space, these pen rests can be really, really cool. So let me know down below, do you guys have any pen rests that you fancy? Do you have a particular method that you carry or keep your pens on your desk? And now you'll keep an eye out for other kind of visitors when you are eyeing someone's writing desk. Take care, everybody. I hope you've had a wonderful time exploring the world of pen rests with me.